so I got an opportunity to sit down and talk with Professor Dave from Professor Dave Explains whom I'm sure most people in my audience would know. If you don't, I'm sure you'll love his content. He runs a channel based in the US where he talks in detail about many topics in science and also debunks pseudoscience like flat earth and creation myths from religions. Since this is a topic that I thought would be interesting for my audience, we both took a look at Frank Turek who is a popular Christian apologist and his views on evolution. Without further ado, here's the video. This is the first question, right. okay? And this is from our patrons. Is the Bible compatible with evolution, meaning common ancestry is true, but the process was guided? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. If you mean biblical inerrancy, it doesn't appear to be. I, I want to ask you this also. Mm -hmm. uh, he says biblical inerrancy. What's that? That's That the Bible is literally true word for word as read, right? So six days, that's six days. And this, this person begat, that person begat is all literally true. And that's where you get young earth creationism and you know that's which i don't i don't remember if he's a young earth i think he's probably a young earth creationist he might not be i don't remember i just know he's a dime a dozen <laughs> apologist um he's he's one like there's different tiers of apologists and like the the ones mm. that don't actually know any science like him they're kind of a lower tier whereas the higher tiers they actually did study science so they're better at lying about science you know they have the mm -hmm. jargon so they can like maneuver the landscape a little better. But ones like this guy, I mean, it's just, you know, we'll, we'll find out. I've never seen this video, so I don't know, but. Compatible because you've got God creating Adam out of the dust, not out of pre-existing animal forms. So I would say no, but even if macro evolution were true, and I don't think it is, but even if it were true, that wouldn't mean Christianity was false. It would give us problems for biblical inerrancy in the Old Testament but it wouldn't mean Christianity was false. So what I find hilarious here is that he has a problem with evolution, which we have mountains of evidence for, but he finds it more reasonable to think that God divinely, supernaturally created Adam out of the dust. Well, yeah, because the scripture tells him so. But I mean, the the interesting thing with what apologetics, I mean, now they're all about this. Oh, yeah, microevolution, totally. Microevolution is true. Macroevolution is ridiculous. Whereas they're not different processes, right? Biologists tend not even to use those words. It's apologists who use those words. It's just evolution. Right. Microevolution versus macroevolution, accepting the former, not the latter, is like saying, oh, totally, you can walk 20 feet, but you can't walk 10 miles. That doesn't make any sense. Right. It's just mm. evolution for a long time and you get wide, mm. uh, wildly disparate forms. But that's how they trick their flock is that they go, well, yeah, obviously a little bit of evolution because we've physically observed it. But that doesn't mean you can get from this thing to this thing. Which, you know, if you don't understand biology and you don't understand genetics, it is a lot to try and wrap your head around how these wildly disparate forms develop over millions of years. Mm. But the evidence is overwhelming. It's just their job to deny it. And it's easy to do when you're the people you're targeting don't understand basic science. Yeah. Could still exist and Christian Christianity could still be true because Jesus came and died and rose from the dead. So obviously, I mean, duh, yeah. Jesus rose from the dead. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> like, I just yeah. he like this is apologists just crack me up, man. Like they just take these unbelievable things on faith and they they reject the science that they could learn in in they could learn it easily. I mean, he's probably at least average intelligence. He could probably learn this stuff but he's just so devoted to staying ignorant. It's just blows my mind, man. We have apologists here in India too, Christian apologists. They're so indoctrinated in their childhood that uh, even when presented uh, convincing evidence, they would still rather believe that, hey, the evidence is wrong, the scripture is right. Sure, yeah, scripture about, yeah, there are plenty, there there are apologists, yeah, who, who flat out admit that it's mm -hmm. scripture first before even if science uh what's his name uh kurt wise is that mm -hmm. uh paleontologist who's a young earth creationist and he specifically you know people will prop him up and go oh see there's a scientist with a phd who says young well, why does he say young earth 
because of his because of scripture, not because of science. Mm. Right. Mm. It's not like he used empirical evidence to arrive at a young age for the earth. No, it's scripture, just like all of you people. He's just this weird anomaly of somebody who studied some area of science and rejects it in favor of scripture where they where they conflict. That's mm. brainwashing. That's it's his fundamental yeah. tier of reality. And he will reject science despite being a scientist. Mm. So I imagine it's easy for somebody like this who never learned any science. It's not that hard. So why do you say that we'd have to reject? Is that what you're saying? We'd have to reject biblical inerrancy in well, order to Well, yeah, adopt? if we're going to say, or unless we're just going to allegorize the whole thing and, and say okay. when when Genesis says that God created Adam out of the dust, that uh -huh. was just a metaphor of some kind for mm -hmm. uh, God created. Well, so what exactly if someone said what that that's the- intelligent Christian would do is go, I'm oh, okay, this scripture can be just nice stories and I'll learn science. Too, you know so what i've seen people do is uh wherever scriptures right hey look at this it's right over here and wherever a scripture is wrong hey you were supposed to interpret it as a metaphor it's your fault for literally taking right. it right right so it's like this it, it, it's like making something unfalsifiable like wherever there's a possibility of falsification hey mm -hmm. That's not literal. That's a metaphor. That's where you get the pushback and in, in biblical li literalism because there mm -hmm. are more intelligent religious people who start to um, pull back on the literal uh, validity of the Bible and say, okay, hang on. We have to make room for all of this stuff that humanity has been learning over the past centuries. Mm -hmm. So let's walk it back. Okay, this is, a, this is an allegory. This is a metaphor, blah, blah, blah. And so then you just have that that backlash of people to go, no, everything is exactly true. And I will reject any, anything that uh, contradicts what the Bible says, you know, no matter how much evidence there is against it. But um, yeah, fortunately, most I mean, most religious people, I think, are able to kind of mold their their religious views to what mm -hmm. what we learn empirically. Um, but mm -hmm. those who can't. Uh, sorry, you know, you're, you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. So correct interpretation. So, right. There's different interpretations of scripture. Mm -hmm. So maybe they just say that the correct interpretation sort of leaves it a, an open question of how God brought about life. So well, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't reject inerrancy or even inspiration. It would just be, this is a different interpretation of this biblical passage. Right. I think you can do that with some passages. That one seems pretty, pretty clear to me. Which though. one? that God creates Adam out of the dust. He doesn't create him out of pre-existing life form. Watching Turek like dig his heels in with like, well, no, because it says that God made Adam out of dust. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not made out of dust. Humans are not made out of dust. That's a pretty big opening for you to take mm -hmm. that as a metaphor, right? If you want to go, okay, mm -hmm. made out of dust. Well, okay, so maybe that means that um, the elements that make up our bodies, you know, the, the, the tiniest things in our bodies are derived from, you know, we, we share uh, particles in common with the earth and the, and, you know, everything around us. Now that would be true, right? I mean, you can find, uh, you know, carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms in, uh, in, in you know, you can find in, in, in minerals and, and in every, you know, all over the place there all around us. Right. So, that would be a nice conclusion that you could make for that. But no, he's digging his heels in. Literally, God went like this and took some dust and made a human thing. And that was Adam. It's like, well, then why aren't we made of dust? Explain that to me. <laughs> like, uh, it's clearly written by someone who has had no idea what humans are made of, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And <laughs> that's the thing. We're just using some basic critical thinking to to think about this and uh, a lot of people a lot of religious apologists uh, who have been indoctrinated in their childhood they'll never use they might develop a lot of really good critical thinking later in life but they'll never apply to their own religion they'll only apply it elsewhere yeah, yeah. their foundational logic has been set in this framework and it's just too mm -hmm. painful to shed i mean a lot of people do though and they end up pretty angry you know about their upbringing but some mm -hmm. just don't have mm -hmm. the courage to just go okay what i've been told is a lie 
let's move on from here. Let's pick up the pieces. Let's uh, try to do better from this point forward, you know. So, and some people are so devoted to it that they try to make a career out of their, they try to make a career out of their own denial of reality. That's what an apologist is, basically. Mm -hmm. Directly, divinely create Adam out of dust. So mm -hmm. uh, all the other animals are created and then you get man. So yeah, well, some, it would some seem people, to be an odd interpretation to, to say that we could fit evolution in there. Yeah, some theologians think that you could have like a separate event of God creating man specifically, but then everyone else or all the other life forms sort of going through the evolutionary process. And so God sort of specially creates man somewhere. Well, let's talk um, about that though. Let's talk about that. So, <laughs> so, so by man, we're, we're probably saying homo sapiens sapiens, right? The precise species yeah. that we are. So we're saying that natural what, or what he's suggesting that, or at least what he's suggesting that some other scholars are proposing is that we allow for natural processes to get us all the way from an, an abiogenesis event and unicellular life and then multicellular life and then going all the way up through everything we, we talked about and getting to uh, even to primates. And now you've got Australopithecines and then you've got Homo erectus and you get all the way up mm -hmm. to something that is almost human. And then, and then God's like, and wait, hang on. You need me for this next step here. It's like, how do you like, come on. <laughs> like, yeah, I hadn't heard that before. I'd have to see what kind of argumentation they give for that. Yeah. But it seems to be he's creating the life forms individually through the days and mm -hmm. then you get to man in day six and he creates them but let me just say this that even if macroevolution were 100 percent true the laws that drive it still need a mind behind them no because, that i agree with yeah because the world is not random the world has order to it and structure this idea that uh, evolution is random this straw manning of evolution i mean evolution is the last natural selection is the furthest thing from random right mm -hmm. this i i've noticed that they do this kind of straw manning of evolution in front of their audiences very often why is that is it because it makes it easier to uh argue against is that why they do it yeah i don't know it's a fear button right with the uncertainty we're we're if we're fearful of uncertainty and so it's like a little bit of an emotional reaction um, but also, but it's not, I mean, he doesn't understand biology or, or any science. I mean, he's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to kick the can back into physics is what he's doing. First of all. So, I mean, he's saying like, even if we accept all of biology, well, physics proves God, right? Because you have all the, I mean, we're he's trying to tee up like a fine tuning no. argument, you know, Yeah. which is less yeah. stupid than denying uh, evolution, certainly, but is still not a good argument for God, right? It's just another God of the gaps. Mm -hmm. It's just another God of the gaps in a yep. smaller yep. gap. Yep. But it's, um, they just, they can't help themselves but use these horrible, horrible, a million times disproven, um, you mm -hmm. know, arguments. Mm -hmm. They just are addicted to them. Yeah. Yeah, because the world is not random. Yeah. The world has order to it and structure. That's how we can yeah. do science, by yeah. the way, as cause and effect, reliable cause and effect, very fine-tuned natural law. Yeah. So even if you were to tell say that, that somehow- to, uh, these... Tell that to a weatherman, <laughs> right? Tell that to a meteorologist. Yep. <laughs> Life forms could come into existence through some sort of natural process. The natural process itself is guided by a mind because the natural forces that when we combine, we call them natural laws, require a mind they're consistent they're precise they're very fine-tuned they require a mind to even exist so you don't get away from uh, some kind of intelligence yeah. by saying macro evolution is true i have more sympathy for somebody that is going to make an argument for god from that standpoint uh, it's it's less offensive it's less offensive to me to make some kind of a fine-tuning argument mm -hmm. it's it's inevitably fallacious it is not a good argument for god at all but at least you're not just blatantly denying an entire field of science right you're just like not you're just like a little bit bad at physics as opposed to going biology right <laughs> Uh, so it's less offensive mm -hmm. to me, but it's ultimately not. And it's just his way of dodging everything anyway. It's like, 
if macro mm -hmm. evolution were mm -hmm. true well it is so let's keep talking about that so mm -hmm. you can accept it because he doesn't accept it but he you know mm -hmm. we would like for him to understand that instead of just do this weird dodge Hope you guys enjoyed that. I bring a lot of such informative content on the channel, especially myth busting. Feel free to check them out. Another thing is that since last month, I've been trying to run this channel with no sponsorships, with only support from my audience. So if you'd like to support me, the links are down below. I highly recommend the platforms Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee. I also have a website and merch where you can support me. Again, the links are down below. We also did a video on Dave's channel where we discussed how Hinduism treats evolution. If you want to watch that, check it out right here. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is dope.